So the next thing we would like to look at in terms of resources, because it's important for our survival as a species and other species on, the, on this planet, is a renewable versus non-renewable resource. Now there are th some things that are overtly renewable. For example, we can rely, as far as we know, on the sun supplying us, radiating us, supplying us with energy for at least five billion more years. None of us are going to be around when finally the sun reaches the end of its life. And stars, as you probably know, reach the, the end of their lives at different times, depending on their size and mass and the rate they're burning uh, their fuel. But we can, we can rely on the sun being around as a potential source of light and also, of course, energy. Light, we can convert various ways to a form of energy uh, through our high-tech capabilities. So the sun is a potentially renewable resource. But there are also, and of course it's become very important to us, non-renewable resources. Are there things that we use faster than they can be replaced? And I'd like to talk about that uh, for a while. Let's look at the non-renewable resources, which of course figure largely in our minds. There are ways in the past that we have depleted a stock or a material or an animal faster than it can be replenished naturally. That would include things like uh, bison on the Great Plains in North America. For at least 10,000 years, the indigenous people of North America lived in some kind of equilibrium with the bison on the plains. They killed them, they ate them, they uh, used their skins for warmth, for their uh, accommodation. They lived side by side with the bison without apparently destroying the viability of the herds which were roaming the Great Plains. When people came along and started shooting them, it was remarkable how quickly that stock of bison was depleted. Now, a lot of that shooting was done for no great reason. It wasn't done to supply food. It wasn't done for any uh, great profound need. But certainly, it was dramatic in that the bison population fell dramatically. And there are examples like that. And fundamentally, that's the, the real issue here. So let's, let's just talk about that. So we need the stock replenishment rate and depletion. If all of these are in balance, we've got something of a renewable resource. So our resource, the stock, is, for example, the number of bison around. If they are naturally replenished at the rate that they achieve without any interference from humans, that doesn't mean there's not interference from other sources like disease or predators that they would encounter before uh, Homo sapiens arrived on the Great Plains. As long as the replenishment is sufficient and overwhelms the depletion or is in some kind of equilibrium, the stock remains at some kind of uh, equilibrium level. When you look at this, in fact, we're right into what is known as predator-prey theory. And that's a long-running, uh, int intellectually fascinating uh, line of investigation in the natural world and other environments as well. So predator-prey theory has a strong mathematical basis now. The equations are known in terms of the, these kind of parameters that I've written here.